Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into something uh, pretty mind-bending today. I think so. I'm ready if you are. Let's do it. We're talking all about synchronicity. Those weird coincidences that feel like they just have to be more than just chance. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like when you think of a friend and then they call you right at that moment. Or you're looking for a specific book. And then you find it. Exactly. You find the exact book you need. It happens to me all the time. Me too. Totally. So we're going to explore all that today, but we're not just going to, you know, like define synchronicity. Yeah. We're going to go way deeper. We are. We're going to connect it to things like psychology. Oh, yeah. Even a little quantum physics. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. So let's start by making sure we're all on the same page here. What exactly is synchronicity? Yeah. So... The term, I mean, the actual term synchronicity was coined by Carl Jung. Okay. He was a super famous psychologist. Wonderful. And he saw synchronicity as these events that are connected by meaning, mm -hmm. not by like a normal cause and effect relationship that we're all used to. So not like A plus B equals C. Not quite. Ah. More like imagine two separate things happening at the same time. Okay. But they're linked by some kind of deeper feeling. You know, yep. it's like a personal meaning. So it's like, it's a coincidence, but it has a deep significance to you, to the person experiencing it. Exactly. It's that, whoa, there's something bigger at play here feeling. I get that. Like the universe is trying to give you a message. Right. Okay. So now Jung didn't just like pull this idea out of thin air. Oh, no, definitely not. He had a whole theory behind synchronicity. Of course. And a big part of that was this idea of the unconscious mind, you know. Okay. The unconscious mind, that part of us that's hidden. The hidden part, yeah. That's influencing us all the time, whether we realize it or not. Yeah. And Jung's big contribution was that he connected the unconscious to synchronicity. So what did that look like? He thought that those meaningful coincidences, those synchronicities, they weren't random. He thought they were reflections of our unconscious somehow aligning with the outside world. Okay, so that's kind of a lot. So our thoughts and intentions can influence what happens around us. Well, it might sound pretty out there. It does. But it gets even weirder because Jung actually collaborated with Wolfgang Pauli on all this. Wait, who is Wolfgang Pauli? He was a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Hold on. So you're saying a hard scientist was interested in something as, I don't know, like mystical as synchronicity? Yeah, I know, right? Total opposite ends of the spectrum. Right. Pauli was like this quantum mechanics pioneer, but he was totally fascinated by Jung's ideas too. And they actually started seeing these parallels between Jung's synchronicity, so the bizarre things they were discovering in quantum mechanics. Okay, so now we're like down the rabbit hole. What in the world does quantum physics have to do with any of this? Well, I mean, quantum mechanics shows us that reality, the way it works down at that really small level, is so different from anything we experience in our everyday lives. Right, right. It's this world where, like, tiny little particles can be connected across huge distances like mind-blowing distances, mm. or even like how observing something can actually change what that something is. Wow. And it's this world where cause and effect, you know, like that A plus B equals C, it's just not always so straightforward. So are you saying the weirdness of quantum physics sort of like echoes the weirdness of synchronicity? Exactly. Think of it like quantum entanglement. You've got these two tiny particles, maybe light years apart. Okay. But they're linked somehow. Yeah. And if you change one of those particles, the other one changes instantly. Instantly. But they're super far apart. Instantly. Mm. It's like they're communicating faster than light. Mm -hmm. Almost as if there's this invisible thread connecting them that goes beyond space and time. So that's definitely what I would call a meaningful coincidence. You know, you, you put it like that. And it almost makes synchronicity seem, I don't know, kind of scientific. It really does make you think, right? Uh. And if we zoom out and look at the bigger picture here, both synchronicity and quantum entanglement, they kind of challenge our normal way of understanding reality. How so? Well, we tend to think of things in this very linear way, right? Like this happens and then this happens because of it. A causes B. Right. But these phenomena, they suggest this whole other level of reality where things are all connected in ways that Honestly, we're just starting to understand. Like, there's this whole web of connections going on beneath the surface. Wow. Okay, so we've got young psychology with the unconscious mind. We've got quantum physics, which is just blowing my mind. Is there anything else we should add to this whole synchronicity mix? Well, we should probably mention that not everyone was totally on board with Jung's ideas. Oh, really? Yeah. Another very famous psychologist, Sigmund Freud, he 
had a totally different take on those meaningful coincidences. Ah, Freud. Always good for an intellectual debate, right? Mm -hmm. So what was his explanation for these things? So Freud, much like Jung, he also believed in the unconscious mind. Okay, so that's something they agree on. Right. But Freud didn't think these coincidences were about some grand cosmic connection. <laughs> okay. He was way more focused on how our repressed desires, our unconscious wishes, can actually kind of manifest out in the world. So, like, if you run into someone you've been thinking about, it's not like the universe making it happen. Yeah. It's because deep down you wanted to see them. Exactly. For Freud, it all boiled down to our own internal drives. He saw it as a purely psychological phenomenon, not some metaphysical one. But Jung, he disagreed. He thought it was something way more significant, like a glimpse into how everything is connected. So it's like Freud's practical, down-to-earth view versus Jung's big cosmic perspective. I like that. Yeah, and while they definitely had their differences, they both agreed that the unconscious is a powerful force in how we experience these seemingly random events. Right. To really understand how strongly Jung believed in this, we have to talk about the story of the golden scarab beetle. Okay, I've heard whispers about this. Tell me all about it. So, this story, it involves one of Jung's patients. And she was really having a hard time in therapy. Okay. Super rational. Mm. Very intellectual. Yeah. And she was super resistant to this idea that the unconscious could have any impact on her life. This sounds like she would have loved Freud. Right. So where does this beetle come in? So picture this. They're in the middle of a session. Mm -hmm. And she's talking about a dream. She dreamt that someone gave her this golden scarab beetle as a gift. Okay. And here she's describing this dream. A real beetle, like a real live beetle. Away. Starts banging on the window of Jung's office. Get out. You can't make this stuff up. What happened? So Jung goes over, opens the window, catches the beetle. Wow. And he gives it to his patient. I'm speechless. And it turns out this beetle is actually a really rare species. Mm. It has this golden green sheen, almost exactly like the one in her dream. That is wild. I mean, that's some serious timing. I think even the biggest skeptic would have to wonder if that was just a random coincidence. Totally. Yeah. And, you know, this whole event had a huge impact on the patient. It kind of broke through all those rational defenses she had built up. Yeah. And it let her start understanding things on a deeper, more symbolic level. Mm. For Jung, I mean, this was like the perfect example of synchronicity in action. Right. Mm. You have the patient's inner world, her dream. Mm. And it's mirrored by this event in the outside world. Wow. And that led to a major change in her consciousness. So it sounds like it's not just about the coincidences themselves, but the meaning that we give to them. You got it. Synchronicity is totally subjective. It's all about how these events, how these coincidences, how they resonate with your own personal journey. Right, right. Your own psyche. Yeah. And the meaning that you find in them. That can give you insights, guidance, even validation. Yeah, you know, this makes me think of all those times where I felt like a song on the radio was speaking directly to me. Or like stumbling across a quote at the exact right time. Oh, yeah. It's kind of spooky when it happens. It really is. Yeah. But I think those are the times we really need to pay attention. It's like the universe is trying to whisper to us, mm -hmm. telling us to look deeper, to see how our inner and outer worlds connect. I love that. Now, let's be real. Not everyone buys into this whole synchronicity thing. Some people might just say it's all confirmation bias, right? Like our brains love to find patterns. Oh, absolutely. And you're totally right to point that out. There are definitely skeptics out there. Yeah. They say we tend to focus on the coincidences that fit with what we already believe and ignore all the times things don't line up. Which is a lot of the time. Right, exactly. Huh. And confirmation bias is a very real thing. So how do we know if we're just tricking ourselves? Right, good question. Is there even a way to tell if it's a genuine synchronicity versus our brains just, you know, playing games with us? That's a tough one. It's hard to say for sure. But one thing to consider is the emotional impact. You know, how does that event make you feel? Genuine synchronicities, they tend to evoke this really strong emotional response. Like what? Like awe, wonder, mm -hmm. a sense of meaning that goes beyond just, oh, that's a coincidence. Right. It can feel really profound. Yeah. Like you've touched something sacred, maybe even transformative. So it's about paying attention to how those coincidences make us feel. Exactly. Don't just brush them off. See what feelings come up. Okay. And it's also interesting that this idea of interconnectedness, which is, you know, at the heart of synchronicity, it's not just some new agey thing. Right. It actually lines up with a lot of ancient philosophies and spiritual traditions all over the world. Oh, really? Tell me more about that. 
Well, think about traditions like Taoism, Buddhism. These philosophies see everything as connected, part of this larger cosmic web. Wow. The idea that our thoughts and actions ripple outward and impact everything around us is a really core principle in a lot of these traditions. So Jung wasn't just coming up with these ideas out of nowhere. They have roots in some pretty deep philosophical stuff. That's right. And there's even some modern psychology research that supports this idea. That our minds can impact the outside world. Yes, though maybe not in the literal way we might think. Like psychologist Stanislav Grof, he's done all this work with non-ordinary states of consciousness. Okay, now we're getting really deep. What are non-ordinary states of consciousness? Think about experiences you might have during deep meditation or even, you know, psychedelic experiences. Right. And Groff found that people in these states, they often report this feeling of interconnectedness where the line between them and everything else just dissolves. Wow. And those experiences often come along with synchronicities, those meaningful coincidences that seem like confirmations like messages from somewhere beyond our normal reality. So it's like these altered states, they make us more aware of how everything is connected. Yeah, it's like we're tuning into a frequency that we can't normally pick up. This is all fascinating. Mm. But honestly, it's kind of a lot to process. Like mm. if we're surrounded by these synchronicities all the time, how are we supposed to know which ones to pay attention to? It seems like we could get lost in a sea of coincidences. I get that. And you're right, you definitely don't want to obsess over every little thing or try to force meaning onto everything. It's more about... Having this open mind, being aware, and noticing when something really stands out. Okay, so be mindful, but don't go crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Is there anything we can do to, like, tune in to these synchronicities? I'd love to know. Well, one thing I'd suggest is keeping a journal. A synchronicity journal? Yeah. Write down those moments when you notice something that feels like a synchronicity. It doesn't matter how small it seems. Just write down what happened, the circumstances, and how it made you feel. I like that. It's like we're becoming our own synchronicity detectives. Right. And as you look back over your journal, you might notice these patterns emerging. Okay. Maybe recurring themes or symbols or even certain people who seem to show up at these key moments in your life. That's awesome. So yeah. it's starting to feel a lot less random, like there's some intelligence behind it all. But let's not get too carried away here. I mean, this is all very interesting. But what does it really mean for the average person? What does synchronicity have to do with our everyday lives? That is the big question, isn't it? I think yeah. at its core, synchronicity is an invitation to see the world differently. Okay. It encourages us to look deeper, to recognize how everything is interconnected, to see meaning where we might have just seen randomness before. So like a shift in perspective. Exactly. And that shift in perspective can be really powerful. It can help us feel less like we're just these isolated individuals bouncing around randomly from one event to the next. I like that. And it helps us feel more like we're part of this bigger story, one where there's a purpose woven into everything. That's a beautiful thought, but it brings up some big questions. Oh, yeah. Like, if our thoughts and intentions can somehow line up with the outside world, does that mean we have more power to shape our own reality than we think? Such a good question. One we should definitely explore further. But I think that's a perfect spot to pause for today. Yeah, we've covered a lot. From the unconscious mind to quantum physics, and even a little ancient wisdom, it's a lot to take in. I know, I know, my brain is doing backflips too. It's a lot to think about, for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what we do here, right? Take these big ideas and try to make sense of them together. That's right. And we should probably mention, you know, synchronicity. It's still a pretty debated topic. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, scientists don't all agree that it's a real thing or just, you know, our perception. Right. And like we said, there's always that confirmation bias thing. Yeah. Our brains are wired to see patterns even when they're not really there. Totally. But even with all that, there's still something so powerful about the idea that, I don't know, that we're all connected. Right, part of something bigger. Yeah, exactly. That there's some meaning behind it all. I feel that. So I think even if you're not completely sold on this whole synchronicity idea, I still think it's worth paying attention to those moments that make you stop and go, wait a minute. Is there something more going on here? Exactly. They're like invitations to look deeper. You know, uh, yeah. question what we think we know about how reality works. Right. Be open to the possibility that, I don't know, that the universe is trying to tell us something. Even if those messages are just our own unconscious trying to get our attention, You're right. that's still valuable information. Absolutely. It can help us understand ourselves better, see our own hidden motivations, yeah. make choices that feel, 
I don't know, more true to ourselves. So it's less about obsessing over every little coincidence and more about being curious, having that sense of wonder about the world. Sure. Being open to the mystery of the unknown. Yeah. Realizing there's so much more to life than what we can see. Beautifully said. And who knows? Maybe by tuning into these synchronicities, we might start to see those hidden connections, those threads of meaning that tie our lives together. I like that. Okay, so we're at the end of our deep dive into synchronicity today. Wow, time flies. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed exploring this topic. It's given me a lot to think about. Me too. And remember, this is really just the beginning. You know, keep exploring this stuff. Yeah, definitely. Notice those meaningful coincidences in your own life. See where they lead you. Maybe you'll even have your own golden scarab beetle moment. Right. Something that changes your perspective and opens you up to a whole new way of seeing things. That would be amazing. Until next time, keep on exploring. Keep your minds open. And if you've had any cool synchronicity experiences yourself, share them with us. We'd love to hear about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. We want to hear about those times that made you really question reality. Until then, happy diving. <laughs> I know my brain is doing backflips right now. Yeah, it's a lot to think about for sure. But right. that's what we like to do here. Right, take these big ideas and see if we can wrestle them to the ground. Totally. And and we should probably say, you know, for the record, yeah, synchronicity, it's still a pretty hotly debated topic. Oh, for sure. Like scientists haven't all agreed, like definitively, that it's a real phenomenon. Right. Or just, you know, our brains sort of making connections that aren't really there. Totally. And like we were saying earlier, right. th there's always that confirmation bias lurking in the shadows. Yeah. Our brains love to find patterns. They do. Even if they aren't there. But even with all of that, yeah. there's just something so powerful oh, yeah. about the idea that we're all connected. Totally. That there's meaning and purpose woven into our lives. It's a beautiful thought. It really is. And I think even if you're not like, you know, fully on board with love the it. whole synchronicity thing, yeah. it's still valuable to Cute. notice yeah. those moments that make you kind of stop and go, hold on a second. What was that? Oh, yeah, exactly. Like an invitation to look a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe question what we think we know. Right. About how reality works and just be open. Open to the possibility. Yeah. That maybe the universe is sending us a message. Or maybe even if it's not the universe, you know. Right. Maybe it's our own unconscious. Exactly. Trying to get our attention. It's still valuable. Yeah. Helps us understand ourselves better. Totally. You know, see what's going on beneath the surface. Right. So it's less about obsessing over, you know, every little coincidence we encounter. Yeah. And more about just having that curiosity and wonder. Totally. About the world around us. Be open to the mystery. Right. And the unknown. The unknown. Yeah. Knowing there's more to life than meets the eye. Beautifully said. And who knows, maybe by tuning into these synchronicities, we'll actually start to see those connections, those yeah. threads of meaning that tie everything together. It's a wonderful thought. Well, that brings us to the end of our deep dive today, exploring the world of synchronicity. That was fun. It was, it was a good one. I don't know about you, but it's given me a lot to ponder. Me too. Yeah. And hey, yeah. you know, this is just the beginning. Really okay. keep exploring. Yeah. Keep noticing those meaningful coincidences. Right. See where they lead you. Maybe you'll even have your own golden scarab beetle moment. Maybe you will. Something that, you know, shifts your perspective. Right. Opens you up to a whole new way of seeing the world. Until next time, keep your minds open to the wonder of it all. I love it. And if you've had any crazy synchronicity experiences, Please. share them with us. Yes. We would love to hear about it. Tell us about those times you questioned reality. Until then, happy diving. <laughs>